All right. Um, the spherical volume with the radius has a certain uniform charge density. What's the total charge? Well, this is a really simple problem. Um, we're given charge density, right? PV equals 10 to the 15 C. And we want to know what Q equals. Well, what's the relationship between um, charge density and charge? Well, it's just to get charge, you just multiply this by some sort of volume because that's literally what charge density is. It's, it's charge per volume for some unit volume. So we're given the sphere dimensions. So you might think at first, like, hmm, do I need to integrate this? Well, you really don't because it's a, it's a uniform charge density. There's no variable that's being affected as you go out. So it's just it's just a sphere with with the same amount of charge through every point. So pretty much what I'm what I'm trying to get at here is usually you'd have something like this. You'd have Q equal to the integral of this rho V um, dd. Well you still have that, but in this case you don't have to change it to like spherical coordinates or anything because this will just turn into um, you can do it like that, like 0 to V, and it'll just be like this. Q equals rho V, V. Because it's, again, because it's uniform. No worries about integration whatsoever. So, um, what's the volume of a sphere? Well, the volume of a sphere is 4, 4 thirds, yeah, 4 thirds pi r squared, r cubed. Shit. Um, this is a V. Doesn't look very good. Okay. So you just multiply the two together. Q equals 10 to the 15 times V cubed. Four thirds pi. Two micrometers our radius cubed and you know it's always good to look at the units notice that the units will cancel because this, this meter cubed will cancel with that meter cubed right and that will give you the answer of 3.35 times 10 negative 2 coulombs okay cool so you got that right next this is the this is really the more the reason I'm kind of doing this because um, that was all part A. You, you did it. You found the total charge. That's the total charge in the sphere. So now assume that a region contains one of these little spheres and every corner of a cubical grid three millimeters on a side. So you have these cubes. You have these cubes each of them being three millimeters and they're kind of stacked on top of each other and you have spheres at every point that's kind of what it's looking at and it wants to know do something like that right you get the point it wants to know what the what the total charge density would be throughout because it's gonna it's still gonna be like a um, well, I guess I don't know if I should say. Yeah, it's still going to be pretty much not not uniform, but you can get like an average charge density. That's what it is. So we're looking for PV average. Or just call it P. Yeah, I'll call it PV average. It's not really it's not really uniform. I almost said it's uniform charge density, but it, it'll actually be a. Uh, higher charge density over here, lower in here, but we're looking for the average throughout this this array of cubes. So the, the first thing to you need to ask yourself is, okay, how many of these spheres are effectively in one of these cubes? So if you had like a, let's just say you had a two-dimensional grid for the time being, 
square here, square here, here. Man, I'm terrible at this. So you have a sphere here, a sphere here, a sphere here. So in two dimensions, you can tell that this sphere right here is being broken into four quadrants, right? But each cube has one fourth of the sphere. So for, for, let's just say, let's just call this cube A. So for A, the amount of, tr the amount of spheres, the amount of portions of spheres, well, in, in this case, circles, because we're doing 2D, would be a quarter of, of this sphere, plus a quarter of this sphere, plus a quarter of that sphere, plus a quarter of that sphere equals one. So you can see that this will, this effectively has one sphere within its cube or within its square. So now when you go to, oh shit, what the hell? What the fuck? Why is this a thing? All right, there you go. So now let's make another array real quick. And you might be able to guess what, what the answer is going to be here now that I did that. Because it's kind of, I don't know, it makes sense in my brain, I guess, at least. So now we're in three dimensions. Uh, so we have a sphere here, a sphere here, a sphere here, 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 here. here. So let's just look at this guy right here, this center one. Well, this center sphere is connected to this cube. It's connected to this cube. So these are just two cubes. Then you can imagine there's a cube extending out in this direction, right? Maybe I'll draw it in a different color. It's, there's another cube coming out here. And then there's another, there's another whole entire set of cubes coming up this way. So that's a whole another four set of cubes. If you can imagine they're all up here like that. So now you have for this center guy right here, if you notice it's connected to this box, 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 and this box. Because these are all boxes, right? So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one sphere connects to eight cubes, <clears throat> right? Well, now we know how many it's. So it's effectively being divided by by eight, right? It's getting fractioned by eight. That's that's why we're doing all this to find out like what the fraction is of sphere to cube. But each each cube has how many corners? Well, you might know this already, but I'll draw it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what you notice is that each cube is going to have eight eight portions of spheres. This is portions or parts of spheres. Times the amount that the sphere is being divided by. Because you're not getting the whole sphere, you're only getting the you know effective like a like a weight of the sphere. So that's gonna be one again. So all we really it kind of winds down to basically what we did up here. But you really do need to think it through. So each cube has effective charge of one sphere. Okay, so now that we know that, we can just find um, rho v. So rho v average is going to be equal to some charge over some volume. Well, we know 
that it effectively has one Q, one spheres worth of charge. So what's one spheres worth of charge? Well, that's uh, up here. 3.35 times 10 to the negative 2. Coulombs. And then one sphere is, what was it, 2 millimeters? 3 millimeters on the side. Three millimeters cubed. And that will give you 1.24 times 10 to the 6 coulombs per meter. And it's important to notice that this is not uniform. And that's really not part of the problem, but it's just good to know. Because, like, you know, all your charges are coming from these spheres right here, right? So, obviously, if you're getting, like, towards the center, you're not going to have as much charge here. But the P average, I guess the P average kind of is uniform. Not really. All right, well, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's not part of the problem. Peace.